Hello Duelists! Russ Mero here. Earlier today, Konami revealed a new archetype that will be debuting in the next main booster, Chaos Impact, and it will be called Hakai. So those of you guys who watch or read a lot of Japanese media would be familiar with the word Hakai, which typically means destroy. But for this archetype, the word Hakai is actually spelled a bit differently. It's actually a combination of two different words, Hakai, which means destroy, and Kikai, which means machine. By itself, the Ha from Hakai means pretty much the same thing. Destroy, rip, defeat, break, tear, rend, frustrate, all the kind of destructive kind of things. Whereas while the Kai from Kikai also means machine, it also has a separate meaning of fetter, which means the chains and manacles, stuff that you lock criminals up with. So there are a lot of ways we can actually interpret the meaning of the name behind this archetype. It could be like destruction machine, chains of destruction, or chained up destruction. So we'll just call it Hakai for now and leave that open to whatever Konami of America wants to localize it as. Although I think it's just going to be localized as Hakai spelled out in English. So now let's take a look at the different Hakai characters. The monsters of this archetype are divided into a two-layered hierarchy. First, we have the Hakai Dojis at the bottom and the Hakai Shins on top. So the term Doji has a few different meanings entwined into it. Literally, it means child. It is also used in the naming of many different Oni or demons in Japanese mythology and culture, such as Shuten Doji and Ibaraki Doji. So there's that idea of being a demon or demonic an existence or being as well. Finally, Doji is also used in Buddhist terminology as a disciple of basically the Buddhist practice. So it can also mean disciple in this sense. So you could think of the Hakai Dojis as disciples of this whole like Hakai religion. There are very strong religious overtones in these archetypes and this religion basically comprises of demons or demonic beings. And above the Hakai Dojis, we have the Hakai Shins, which are basically the gods of Hakai, the gods of this so-called religion. We have three gods, which are all Link monsters, Hakai Shin Ragya, Hakai Shin Arba, and Hakai So O Shin Rai Go. So for the last and most powerful Link 4, there's a So O added between the Hakai and Shin. And So O, in this case, based on the kanji, kind of loosely translates to Pair King. So it's the idea of being a pair, being two, and also being a king. So in that sense, the Ling for Raigo could actually be like a combined fused form of the red fox Arba and the blue fox Ragia, or maybe it could be their true form, which only appears when the two of them come together and form a pair. It should be noted also that the names of the Hakai Dojis are actually very closely linked to the names of the two Hakai Shins. The red disciple is called Arha, while the red god is called Arba. Now this is especially meaningful in Japanese because all that changed between Arha and Arba is just the strengthening of one of the consonant sounds. Because in Japanese, Ha becomes Ba, the H turns into a B when you basically strengthen this consonant sound. So there's a very close relation between these two words. And the same can be observed for the blue ones. We have Hakai Doji Rakia, which becomes Hakai Shin Ragya. And once again, K, turning into a stronger consonant, becomes G in Japanese. Finally, we have this level 8 monster called the Magatama of the Hakai Shin. So the Magatama is a very notable object that appears very frequently in Japanese religious culture and mythology. So once again, it's bringing in those religious overtones. But just like Hakai, Magatama is actually spelled with different kanji here. And in this case, the kanji for Magatama loosely translates to evil spirit or wicked spirit or calamitous spirit. Well, you guys get the picture. And if you guys have been paying attention to the card artwork, you'd have noticed that basically all of the monsters have are basically like chained up with manacles around their limbs. So that's how like the Kai from Hakai, the meaning of fetters, chains, manacles, actually comes in and fits in this archetype as well. Also, if you look closely at the artwork, you'll realize that in the artwork of Hakai Shin Ragya, which is the blue Hakai Shin, you actually see the red disciple without his mask in the shadows of the artwork. And the same for the red Hakai Shin Arba, you actually see the blue disciple unmasked riding on top of the red Hakai Shin. So, I don't know if they're implying that the disciples actually evolve into the gods, because that would be a bit weird, because I think like the disciples worship the gods, but they don't become the gods unless... I don't know. 
So now that we've kind of set up like a bit of speculative lore about the archetype, let's take a look at what the archetype actually specializes in. Well, as the name suggests, it specializes in a lot of destruction of both your own cards and the opponent's cards, and it rewards you for destruction as well. Hakai Doji Arha's first effect. You can target one card you control, destroy it, and if you do, special summon this card from your hand. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except Fiend Monsters. And let's not forget that while the English TCG localizes it as Fiend, the original name for this type of monster in the OCG is Demon in Japanese. Second effect, if this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect except by its own effect, you can special summon one Hakai monster from your hand or deck except Arha. So as you can see, it has a destruction effect and it also rewards you when it's destroyed. The next disciple, Rakia's first effect, you can target one card you control, destroy it, and also you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn, except feed monsters once again. This is a quick effect. Second effect is exactly the same as the other disciple. If this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, except by its own effect, you can special summon one Hakai monster from your hand or deck, except this card. So, typical stuff, the two disciples. Now, the Magatama is where it gets interesting. First effect, it gains 300 attack for each Hakai card in your graveyard, so that is kind of like an indirect benefit of destroying a lot of cards from your own deck. Now here it is, second effect. You can target one face-up monster your opponent controls. Immediately after this effect resolves, Link summon one Dark Link monster using only that opponent's monster and this card you control as the material. So if you're only going to use this monster and one of your opponent's monsters, you most of the time you'll probably be going for a Link 2, which leads us to the first Hakai Shin Link Monster. And it's actually gonna be a chain. It's gonna go from the Magatama to the Link 2 God, into the Link 3 God, into the Link 4 Final God, as we shall see from here on out. Third effect, if this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one Hakai monster in your grave except this card and special summit. So once again, benefiting off from self-destruction. Now let's take a look at the Link 2 Hakai Shin Ragya first effect. During your opponent's main phase, you can target one face-up special summon monster your opponent controls. Immediately after this effect resolves, Link summon one Dark Link monster except this card, using only that opponent's monster and this card you control as the material, so yes, this is just a step up from the Magatama. It goes without saying that Arba is pretty much the same effect. And finally, you reach the Link 4, the Hakai Soo Shin Rival, which is basically the god that presides over destruction. First effect, if a card on the field is destroyed by a card effect other than this card's effect, you can target one card on the field and destroy it, so a rewarding destruction with destruction. Second effect, when another monster is destroyed by battle, you can target one card on the field, destroy. Third effect, during the end phase, you can target one card on the field, destroy. And yes, I think that pretty much sums up this archetype's really cool mechanic and gimmick. Let's move on to the spells and traps where a lot have actually been revealed so far as well. One thing to note is that all of the spells and traps in the Hakai archetype share the same second effect. If this set card is destroyed by a card effect, you can special summon one Hakai monster from your deck. So basically just by setting these cards, if your opponent basically tries to MST them or destroy them with some kind of back row destroying effect, you basically get the benefit of the destruction. And this goes very well once you've managed to set up your Link 4 uh, Solo Shin Raigo as well, because since you'll be able to do so much destruction of cards on the field, you can actually destroy your own set spells and traps so that you can quickly pull out Hakai monsters from your deck in order to get into more plays and just combo off from there. So our first normal spell, Soo no Kase, or the Shekels of the Soo, lets you add one Hakai card from your deck to your hand, it's a search. The second one, Hakai Shin no Dokoku, or Wall of the Hakai Shin. If you Link summon a Hakai Link monster, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. This is a continuous spell, so you want to set it up early and then you basically go into your continuous consecutive Link summons into the link, from the Magatama to the Link 2, Link 3, Link 4 each time you get free destruction basically. Next, a normal trap called Hakai Shodo or Hakai Homily. Target one Hakai monster you control and one card on the field, destroy both of those cards. So. Whatever Hakai monster you destroy, you're probably going to benefit off of it somehow since all of them basically have an effect that benefits you and triggers when the card is destroyed by battle or card effect. And finally, Hakai Sokyoku or Hakai Dual Dirge, special summon one Hakai monster from your hand or graveyard. Basically just a watered down kind of monster reborn that's specific for this deck. On a whole, all the spells and traps are pretty simple and simple is pretty good. So what do I think about this archetype so far? Well, I really have no idea whether It'll be good or not, but it, it sounds really cool. The effects sound 
quite strong, but I mean, all you really need to do to counter this uh, deck is basically just block destruction and then it basically can't run anymore. But I gotta say that I really love the gimmick of like basically absorbing your opponent's monsters to basically link summon to a higher stage and it is, it's just a super unique and cool form of removal I feel. And I think that, well, creating, I think we've had, we've already had an effect like this before but it was, it, we didn't have like an archetype focus around it, now we do with Hakai and I think it will at least like just pose a very unique kind of threat to the OCG environment and the TCG one when it arrives as well. I'm really looking forward to see how it'll actually shake up the meta and things like that. But I'm if this is all the cards of the archetype so far, I'm just still a bit doubtful of how like... I mean, I think it's gonna be a good deck, but not like a great deck or like the best deck or a really powerful deck, but I do think it'll be super fun to play. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, do give it a like, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and don't forget to subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG videos. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Let's go and look ahead. Our chance and color, color, keep into my life. I will show